the our chemistry or the chemistry we are going to look at what we call metal extraction specifically extraction we are referring to the process that we can obtain a pure element from its impure state or from a state in which it is existing naturally underground you always hear that most elements always exist in crude form or in pure form so how we obtain them and we purify them so what we are referring to what we call extraction now Specifically, our extraction we are going to look at. We are going to look at what we call the extraction of iron. Extraction of iron metal. Don't forget that iron metal always the symbol. You always write it like that in your chemistry. That is from senior one. Now, when we are looking at extraction of iron metal, we are going to first consider what we call the ores of iron. Ores simply means the impure state in which. A metal exists underground, or in which an element exists underground, or the crude form in which an element or a metal or an element exists underground. And for our iron now, we are going to base on our iron the first ore we are calling the hematite, which is going to be an three oxide. Then from there, we are going to look at what we call the magnetite. Then we are looking at what we call the sympathetic iron. Or the cinderite, which is iron two carbonate. Then we are going to look at what we call the iron what? Iron pyrite. However, we are going to rotate more on the hematite and then the magnetite. Remember, hematite, we have said this is iron what? This one is iron three oxide. Then this one is tri iron tetra oxide. We shall also talk about what we call the sympathetic iron, which is iron two. Carbonate. Now, to understand the proper how we can extract a metal, we have to understand clearly the impurities in the metal. So, the impurities here we are looking at, which are majoring in the ore of iron. We have the silicon, we have what we call the carbon, we have the manganese, the sulfur, and then the phosphorus. Now, when we are extracting iron, we have to take some steps. The first step, which we are going to consider, the first step is going to be now what we call roasting of the ore. This one is mainly done when you are dealing with what we call the hematite. Why are you roasting? This one we are calling the dry heating. You are dry heating the ore. When you are dry heating the ore, you are removing the water here, you can see. The ore is having some water in it, some water in it, then when you dry heat it, which what we are calling roasting, then we are removing the water here. Remove the water, we shall obtain our dry and three oxide. Then when you are going to use a sympathetic iron, we are not roasting, but we are heating in oxygen. We are heating it. This explains why we are putting here, heat, heat, being heated in what? In air. So we are heating the sympathetic iron or the ore in oxygen. Then we are getting the iron three oxide. Our main emphasis should be put on iron three oxide. Then when we are using what you call iron pyrite, again we are heating in oxygen. When you eat in oxygen, we shall obtain the iron three oxide, then it's other product. But our main focus should be on the iron three. We will try to look at iron three because now I'm going to take it somewhere. Now, step two, now we are going to feed what you have obtained. That is the iron three oxide, and we are feeding it in a tank, which we are calling the blast furnace. So we are feeding it in the furnace, and that furnace we are calling the blast the blasty furnace. So now, members, we have said after obtaining your ore, which is now iron trioxide, now we are going to feed the ore in what we call the blast what? The blast furnace. Try to look at this one properly. The blast what? The blast furnace. You can see that is a simple tank which they are using now to purify the ore. What do we do? The iron trioxide which you obtained from the other side, as I told you, now we are going to mix it with what you call the calcium carbonate, which we are calling limestone, then the hot carbon, which we are calling coke. This explains why now we have shown them here as other raw materials. Now, as we are going to feed our ore in the tank, we use these other raw materials. One of them is what we are calling the coke or the hot carbon, another one is limestone or the calcium what? The calcium carbonate. Now, when you bring now the mixture, mixture of what? The, the ore, which is iron oxide. Then another one is what? We are putting now what, what coke, then what we have? The calcium carbonate. 
Now inside the tank, this is our tank now, illustration of our tank. We are seeing that you have put the, the mixture inside, then the tank is having some pipes here. These pipes which you are calling eh, the two years, and these pipes are allowing air to enter, hot air. This air we are calling it the oxygen. Air is entering. But remember, it's entering in the tank. Which tank is having the carbon, is having the calcium carbonate, and is having our anethyl oxide. Then you want to see what happens inside this tank. One of the things which occur inside the tank, the hot air containing our oxygen combined with the carbon at the lower level of the tank, as you can see. When now the carbon combined with the oxygen in the hot air, we form what we call the carbon dioxide. Now the carbon dioxide which you have formed, now is going to become reduced by the unreacted cork, the cork which is remaining in the tank which was not oxidized to carbon dioxide react with it. Carbon dioxide, you can see now our equation here, the carbon dioxide which has been formed at this step, now is combined with the remaining coke to form the carbon monoxide. Now after forming the carbon monoxide, our carbon monoxide again at this level, as the, the thing is becoming less hotter here at around 400 degrees, we are seeing that our our ore which you blow out will combine with it, the carbon monoxide in the process which we are calling our reduction. The carbon monoxide reduces our iron nitri oxide to form our molten iron with some carbon dioxide. Obviously, the carbon dioxide and other things will pass outside as the waste, waste gases. Now, remember, we are seeing that the ore is an ore because of some impurities. Which impurities we talked about here? Now, what we are going to see, one of the impurities which was major, it was silicon. One of the impurities was silicon. This one which you mentioned here, silicon. So what are we going to see? The calcium carbonate, which was added in the tank, will decompose from the quick lime or the calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now when it decomposes, what happens? This one is going to be used to remove the, the silicon. Remember the silicon already in the tank, it was silicon, but it combined with oxygen which entered inside the tank to form what we call the silicon, silicon dioxide now, which we are calling the sand. Now, from there, we are seeing that the calcium oxide, the calcium oxide is going to combine, calcium oxide is going to combine with the silicon dioxide in our tank as our major impurity to form what we call the calcium silicate. This is the liquid which we are going to call the what? The slag. Now we have two things in our tank. One of them, it is the calcium silicate or the slag. Then we have our molten iron which you formed here. Now both the molten iron and the calcium silicate move at the bottom of the tank. This one you are calling the bottom of the tank, you can see, at the bottom of the tank. However, the molten iron is denser than the slag. So we have our molten iron here, then we have our slag here. Then what happens, you tap off the slag, uh, tap off the slag from the tank via this pipe here as I've illustrated here. Because it is on top and the molten iron is at the bottom. Then you tap off your iron here from the bottom through this pipe here now. Now the molten iron you have obtained here, remember us, this molten iron is impure. We call it the pig iron or the cast what? The cast iron. Now what happened to other impurities? Other impurities, we are seeing that in this iron we have now impurities like manganese and then we have impurities like phosphorus, phosphorus, we have impurities like carbon. Now these ones are going to be removed from the ore, so not from the ore, from the molten iron by reacting with iron 3 oxide, which now will oxidize all of these ones to be produced as impure, sorry, to be produced as the waste gases. Now, members, remember we have said in the furnace what we have already obtained, what we call the molten iron. But remember, there is even the impurity of silicon, as we said. The silicon impurity, which, is in, which was in our ore, will be oxidized by the oxygen which entered in the hot air. As we are seeing here, we have silicon, then the oxygen to form silicon dioxide. So our iron series is having this impurity. So are we going to remove this impurity of silicon dioxide? So we have the calcium carbonate which we press here. So calcium carbonate is going to decompose to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. 
Then the form of the calcium oxide or the quick lime here, we are seeing that is the one which is going to help us to remove the silicon dioxide. So we have calcium oxide and the silicon dioxide to form what we call the calcium silicate, what we are calling the slag. So as now the slag and the molten iron will move at the bottom of the tank or the furnace and then we, the iron is denser than the slag. So the slag will be on top and you can tap it along with this pipe as you are tapping the iron along with this pipe now. As after understanding this side, let us try to summarize the whole process. As we are doing our summary, we are going to say that you are putting there the roasted ore. We have the roasted ore. That is roasted iron, iron 3 oxide. You are putting your calcium carbonate in the same tank. Then you are putting there your cocoa, which is the hot carbon. Now what are we going to see? You have pass what the air containing oxygen. So you have your carbon which you have put plus your oxygen, gas. Then we are forming what we are calling carbon dioxide gas. Then the carbon dioxide gas formed is being reduced by unreacted coke. This is coke which is unreacted to form what we call the carbon monoxide gas. Then the carbon monoxide gas which you have formed there is going to reduce our hot power now, the iron 3 oxide, now to form what we call the iron. This iron we are saying is molten plus the gas known as carbon dioxide gas. Now we can balance our equation by putting the 3 there and the 3 there and the 2 there. Now what happened the impurity? We had the silicon which is the main impurity reacting with oxygen gas inside the tank now to form what we call the silicon dioxide now, silicon dioxide, which is now a solid. So this one, how do you remove it? Remember we put, we place there calcium carbonate, the calcium carbonate which we place there, don't forget, will break down because of a lot of temperature, high temperature to form calcium oxide and then carbon dioxide gas. Now the calcium oxide formed will combine with our silicon dioxide which is our main impurity now to form what we call the calcium silicate calcium silicate which we are calling now the slag remember we said the slag is lighter than the molten iron as they are moving down it will be on top and I've already shown you how you can remove the slag now remember the iron which you have obtained here the iron is impure and you have to purify it how do you purify it? You want to purify the molten iron by heating it, heating molten iron, molten iron with the, with what we call iron three oxide to oxidize the impurities like like manganese, by oxidizing impurities like manganese, impurities like carbon, impurities like phosphorus move them. The gaseous ones will pass by the pipes on the furnace. Then the slag we obtained, what is the use of the slag? It is mainly used, used for making for making glasses making glasses and then the iron which is pure which you have obtained. This one you know properly for making wires making wires electric wires making iron bars and bars, don't forget about that, making iron sheets and many other uses. So members, next time we shall look at another method, that one is enough for today.